Excellent. Father and son. They got the gift of singing. I got the gift of talking. <laughs> Good to have you. Thanks, guys. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the River of Life Assembly. And uh, we're so excited that you're here and online watching from all over the place. I think, Pastor John, I don't know how many hits we had last week. It was around 1,000 or so, wasn't it? He's not listening. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, know that uh, it's quite an outreach when you do Facebook with that and, and reach out and people all over the world are, uh, are coming to that. So we just welcome you this morning. This is our Fellowship Sunday, first time now in two years. And uh, there's enough food down there for everybody and me. So, <laughs> so don't be shy. If you're here as a visitor or whatever, you're more than welcome to come downstairs afterwards. Plenty of food, good fellowship, and that's, that's, what, uh, that's what this is all about. It's all about getting together in unity, one with another, and, and praying for one another, and 
listening to the songs about heaven. That's, that's what excites me, because this whole world got nothing to offer. But Jesus got it all. Amen? So let's pray. Father, we come to your, into your presence today with mercy and grace that you gave us in our hearts today. God, I ask you to bless each and every one that's here today. If they're here for the first time, I ask you to bless them. If they're regular members, I ask you to bless them because you're a God that leaves nobody out. You're, you're, you're big enough to supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So have your way today, and we just thank you for it. We ask you to bless John, Pastor John, as he brings the word, and Billy and uh, um, Bobby and uh, Billy Bob as they sing. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died
Thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate what you guys do. And I want to say this. I've been working in the sound room, and uh, I want to say this this morning. Then the sound room is a lot harder than up here. <laughs> and a lot more important. <laughs> well, well. You know, I, I say that over and over because uh, if Luke wouldn't have wrote the gospel, or the book of Acts, we wouldn't have known anything that Paul did, would we? And so uh, the sound room's really important. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and uh, we appreciate all of the people who, all of the things that you do here, all of the time. It's kind of uh, an exciting day because, uh, you know, an awful lot of, you know, here's another whole subject on its own. It's an awful lot easier to be a preacher than a practicer. I always say anybody at all can preach. The Bible is full of wonderful verses and wonderful thoughts, and all you have to do is get up and say them, and everybody says, oh, wow, you're amazing. Well, you're just reading the Bible. <laughs> so if you preach the Bible, you're always amazing as a preacher. But 
when this morning I, I'm, I'm preaching on overcoming and uh, for a while I didn't think I was going to overcome. <laughs> so I had to practice it first and then, and then preach it. And uh, overcoming is one of those subjects that doesn't get as much coverage as it should. Uh, we talk a lot about a lot of other things, but and I think much to our fault, we don't talk enough about the concept of overcoming. In 1 John chapter 5, in verses 4 and 5, the word is mentioned uh, three times. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That's, that's a big thought, isn't it? Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And so the, the basic requirement for being an overcomer is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. And when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you don't automatically overcome everything. We all know that by experience. It's not an automatic. It doesn't just, oh, from here on, every valley will be filled and all the crooked places made straight. That hasn't been my experience. If it's been yours, you can go home now. <laughs> But to me, there, there is a whole lot in overcoming. It, there, there, it, it's a theme that spreads out all over the Bible. It's, it's from Genesis to Revelation, so you could be here a while. You know, yeah, we, we hear a lot of preaching about sin. We hear a lot of preaching about redemption, about the law of God and where it fits in our lives and all the rest. We hear about the second coming. And there's tons of things you hear a lot about but overcoming is something that I want to put more time into and think more about. Because since man sinned and God put him out of the Garden of Eden and cursed the ground, man, it has been required of man that we be overcomers. The earth is a wonderful place. I love it. I walk this time in the year. I hear the birds singing and, and the grass is turning green, all kinds of wonderful things. The, the earth is a wonderful place. But we're stuck in mortal bodies, aren't we? And these mortal bodies are subject to sickness. And, and not only are they subject to sickness, we live among people who are under the control of the evil nature. And, and the environment around us is fallen and it carries with us a lot of obstacles uh, of a world that is under the control for a lot, I wouldn't say totally, but for a lot of the wicked one. The psalmist said this in Psalm 51, verse 5 and 6, he said, I, I was born a sinner. Uh, and I think that we all could say that. I was born a sinner, yes. And from the moment my, my mother conceived me, uh, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. So right from the moment he said I was conceived, I, I was required to be involved in a fallen world and had to struggle and, and get my way through it. Job, who understood this by experience, Job being the first book that was actually is recorded, it says Job by, by experience wrote this in Job chapter 5 and verse 7. He said, and now you're going to be sorry you came to church. <laughs> Pe people are born for trouble, he said. Job said, people are born for trouble as the sparks fly upward. As the troubles of life became more uh, involved in Job's life, he wrote this in Job chapter 30 and verse 26. He said, I looked for good, but evil came. If I were to ask for a show of hands, how many could relate to Job? Some of you could say, yeah, I, I understand completely. He said, I waited for light, but darkness fell. My heart is troubled and restless. How many have ever had that go on in your life? 
And then he said, days of suffering torment me. So he said, I, I had my share of problems in this world. Sometimes in a world where evil and sorrow are everywhere, men lose track of the concept that there is a loving, gracious God who has the final say over our world. We live in an environment where that sometimes is not readily seen. And, and uh, the psalmist wrote this in Psalm 73 in verse 2, thinking about this, he said, as for me, I, I almost lost my footing. He said, I, I got looking around. And when I looked around, he said, he said, you know, I found bad people having it as good as good people. And he said, my, my feet were slipping. I was almost gone. I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. He said, I seen all kinds of good stuff going on in all kinds of bad people's lives. A couple of weeks ago, I, I spoke about Abraham learning how to be blessed in a cursed world. And then we had Easter, and so we talked about that. And I want to go back and finish that concept of how Abraham learned to walk in blessing in a cursed world. God promised Abraham that he would give him the land flowing with milk and honey. He said, you just follow me, Abraham. And he said, I'm going to give you and your descendants a real good piece of property. But I want to talk a little bit about sometimes how when God gives you something, how you get it. And, and over 400 years later, over 400 years, you know, you ever think of how long 400 years? 400 years goes back to Columbus discovering America. Like that's a long time, isn't it? A long, you know, we say, well, 400 years went by, but it was 400 years. And, and a lot of stuff went on in that time. They spent a lot of time in slavery. God had spoken. And, and they lived for years as slaves in Egypt. But God had still spoken. And that's a fascinating thing, isn't it? And then, so 400, over 400 years later, they finally get to this promised land. And so Moses sends in spies to spy out the land that God had given them. And this is what the report was when they came back. It's found in Numbers 13 in verse 25. He said, this is what they said, after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole congregation of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. This is what they said. We entered the land you sent us to, you sent us to explore. And it is indeed a bountiful land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is some of the fruit we got. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. And then this little word. I'm going to preach on this little word sometime. But... It's a pretty big word. He said, he said, we found it's a great spot, but the people living there are powerful. Whoops. And their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants. Sons of Anak. He said, he said it's a great spot, but it don't look like it's going to be that easy for us to get. And, and I, I want to say something here because I believe it's a principle that we have missed. Everything or tons of things that you get from God are just like that. Not an amen. And I understand why. If I was sitting there, I'd be saying, oh my. You, you have to have the ability to see past the problem to get the blessing. Now there's something worth thinking about, isn't it? Caleb, who the Bible says has an, had another heart, he, he was a different fellow than the rest of them, said this in the middle of the confusion in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30, he said, but Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once 
and possess it. And then he says this, for we are well able to what? Overcome. He said, it's there. God's word is for us. And he said, there's some problems, but God has given us the ability to overcome this situation. That's a different heart. That's the heart that John was saying everyone that is born of God should have. He should have that heart that says, okay, there's a problem, but I'm going to overcome that problem. When, when, when Jesus was on earth, speaking about the devil and how we approach him, he said this in Luke chapter 11 and verse 21 and 22, he said, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, that's talking about the devil, a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But, there's the other one, when a stronger than he shall come upon him, and what? And overcome him. There's all them promises there, but, he said, oh, and overcome him, and taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divides the spoils. So he said, the devil's all set up with his walled cities and giants and all the big stuff that's there. And he said, then along comes us, a stronger. That's kind of an interesting concept, isn't it? A lot of this world is under the control of darkness, and that darkness is used to having their own way. We know that from tons of experience. And they're used to destroying, they're used to killing, they're used to hurting, they're used to breaking, they're used to doing all the things that the devil does. Jesus said he doesn't come but to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's doing fine at that, then along comes us. And when we come along, we have to stop that. We have to come against that. John starts the book of Revelations. He, this is how it kind of goes. He first sees Jesus... The one who overcame death, hell, and the grave. Revelations chapter 1, verse 17, 18. He, Jesus says this. He said, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. A amen. And have the keys of hell and death. He said, so, he said I, I, I'm the one who broke hell and death for you. And then... After John hears Jesus say that, Jesus commissions John to write seven letters to seven churches. And this is how they go. Seven times in each letter, one time in each letter, there's this little verse. Revelations 2 and verse 7. To him that overcometh. Every time, every church, Every, every one John writes to, he, ha, he puts this in. To him that overcometh. What's he saying? What is John saying to the seven churches? He's saying, this is it's really interesting to read because every letter is different. You know what that tells me? That tells me that each church has its own, had its own struggle. Each church had something different to overcome. You know what it really tells me? It really tells me that each Christian has something unique. That if you're going to bring God's kingdom, boy, I feel like I'm preaching. <laughs> that if you're going to bring God's kingdom to earth, you have a unique thing that you have to overcome. Amen. Now it's easy for me to look at you and say, come on, get with that. That's nothing to that, but that's your struggle. That's what you're overcoming. And you can look at me and say, you know, John, you could do better than that. That looks easy to me, but for me it isn't. I, I have my own road to walk. I have my own stuff to overcome. You have your own stuff to, to overcome. You know what this book is called? It is called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. And you know what the revelation of Jesus Christ is? Every Christian has something unique to overcome by the power of God. Each one of us have our own road to walk. Each Christian has a special challenge. You know, you, you read through the Gospels, and there's a guy who has a, some 
a guy is, on a, is paralyzed, and he got four friends. So the four friends are going to help him overcome. They're going to get him to Jesus. So they get him on this stretcher, and, and they carry him across town, and when they get there, guess what? Sign on the door. You've got to be vaccinated. I had to do it. <laughs> when they get to the house, come on, you can make a joke. <laughs> when they get to the house, they can't get in. And you know why they can't get in? The people in there won't let them in. Oh my goodness, I could stop and preach. But I'm going on. I, that might be meddling. So they take the roof off. <laughs> and they lower them through the roof. You know what they're doing? They're getting by whatever they have to get by. They're getting through whatever they have to get through. They're getting over whatever they have to get over. They're getting, they're getting, they're going to get the man to Jesus no matter what. And you know, we say, we, I hear people say, it went so easy, it had to be God. I say, ah, what world are you living on? <laughs> and, 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 then, and then the woman with the issue of blood, same thing. She said within herself, if I could touch the border of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. But she had to press through the crowd, right? And then you get to the Syrophoenician woman. She got a big no from Jesus. It still got what she wanted. He said, is it right for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs? And she said, don't matter to me. <laughs> she said, the do little dogs get the little crumbs. That's all I came for. And, 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 you know, I, I read that yesterday and I thought, wow. Like if I got a no from Jesus, I'd pretty much write it off. But she didn't. The victory that overcomes the world is our faith. And Jesus said to her, he said, I've never seen faith like yours. You can get a no from God and still get what you want. <laughs> like that's a fascinating thing. The, the centurion said, I'm not worthy, he said, for you to come into my house. He said, just speak the word, and, and, and from a long distance, God healed a guy. Like, that's, that's the kind of stuff people have to overcome. You could go on all day through the Gospels talking about overcomers. God told Joshua about this land of giants and walled cities. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, every place you put the sole of your foot, boy, that sounds easy till you meet the 11 foot lad. Every place you put the sole of your foot, he said, I've given you. But somebody else is standing on the very piece of ground I want. And there's a walled city. And you can drive three chariots across the top of the wall. It's a big walled city. But I want that land. He said, every place you put the sole of your foot, that have I given unto you. It sounds real easy when you first hear it. But when you get in there and, and, and you start the war... It's a whole different world, isn't it? Well, there, there are a lot of giants that we have to stand against. We live in a body that breaks down. Prone to breaking down, we're, we're required to walk in health. Our lifestyle that we learn from the world is prone to breaking our bodies down. Listen to the children of Israel learning their lessons in the wilderness so they can possess the land. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 4 to 6 says, the people of Israel, I don't know if that's right, also began to what? <laughs> that's not how you enter the promised land. <laughs> the people of Israel also began to complain, oh, for a nice barbecued steak. They exclaimed, we remember them nice June salmon with a little chow chow. <laughs> we used to eat for free in Egypt. And we all had the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlics we wanted. But now our appetite's gone. All we got's this stinking manna. <laughs> and, and you know, there are lots of carnal thoughts that we grow up with that rob us of who we really can be in God. Lots of them. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, he said the sinful nature wants to do evil. How many ever experienced that? 
Don't raise your hand. Which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. Just the opposite. So the, the, the sinful nature wants to do one thing, the Spirit wants to do another. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so we are not free to carry out your own good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you're not under the obligation of the law of Moses. He said, there's a whole new way of walking, of overcoming this. There are lots of social interactions that we all had before we came to Christ that are not conducive to us being overcomers. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 22. He said in verse 25, Jesus told them in this world, the kings and the great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. It will be different. Among you, it will be different. So there's a whole lifestyle you have to learn. Those who are greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leaders should be like a servant. That, that's, that's a whole different world than we grew up in. The kingdom of God is not built around people imposing their will on others. It's built on serving. The, the, the true Christian has a servant heart and looks to serve the people around him. We are sent out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Our, we are called upon to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. The great commission that Jesus gave us in Matthew 28 and 19, he said, Therefore go and make disciples of the nations. Like, did you ever read that and think about it? Is that really what he wanted us to do? He wanted us to go and make disciples of the nations. Now, there is always something in your personal life that you have to overcome. There's always something. There's always something in your home. If I was taking notes, I'd write right now. You know why I'd write right now? Because you're going to be tested on that this week. There's always something in your personal life that you've got to overcome. There's always something in your family that you're called upon to overcome. There's always something in your workplace that you're called to overcome. There is always something in your community that you're called to overcome. Our text says... Even more than that, in 1 John 5 and verse 4 and 5, he said, And whatever is born of God overcometh the world. You know what your first hint should be? That things in your life could become a little rough? The word overcome. Overcome would never have to be in the Bible if we didn't have to overcome some things. It is there. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And who is he that overcomes the world but he that believeth? Every one of those things is talking about overcoming the world. Not just the stuff in your personal life, not just the stuff in your family. No, that's just preparing you for the real fight. The real fight is the real world. That's where God calls every one of us to go out into that real world and the stuff that is, the stuff that is going on in your personal life today, the stuff that is going on in your family today is preparing you for what God calls you to do in the community. And the final promise in Revelations, in, like I just give you a... Summary, Cole's notes on overcoming. The final promise in Revelations is, he that overcometh will inherit all things. There's only one way into the promised land. You know what it is? Killing giants and breaking down walled cities. That's where we are called upon to go. 
He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. You see, going to heaven's free gift. By grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works. Nothing you have to do. But living in this world and overcoming in this world requires the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life every day. You know why we all talk about, boy, it'll be great, Jesus come back any day at all, and everything's, we're all going to be caught up in the clouds and we're all going to live in heaven? Because we really don't want to overcome on earth. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to go to heaven, but if it don't happen today, I might be called upon to get by some stuff, and to get over some stuff and get through some stuff. And, and people say, are you excited about going to heaven? I am. I'm excited about going to heaven. I'm not excited about the road there. Pallet of care and all that stuff. <laughs> I, I, I don't get overly happy about that. I've been there lots with people. This is what the next verse says. The next verse says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable it's part of that first verse really so the the fearful the unbelieving the abominable murders the whoremongers the sorcerers the idolaters and all liars you know what amazes me about that there's two things here you know what's on the first part of the list going to hell the fearful and the unbelieving it's not the liars and adulterers. And it's the fearful and the unbelieving. The contrast is he that overcometh shall inherit all things. But it's contrasted with the fearful and the unbelieving. And so what God is really doing in your life today, he's building you to become that person that will be an overcomer in the midst of life on planet Earth. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. And I have a question for you. And it's a serious question. And the question is, and I think we need to just bow our heads and close our eyes and reflect a moment. What is there in your life today that God is calling upon you to overcome. What is there? What, what is in your life right now that you're up against? And I would venture to say 98%, if not 100, have things going on that you say, you know something? This is what I have to overcome. This is what is in my life. And this is what I want you to do. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want you to say, Holy Spirit. You can just say this quietly to yourselves. Holy Spirit, I need help. I, I, I want to be an overcomer. I'm up against some stuff that's pretty real. And Jesus, I need your help. Lord, I know that when you saved me, you put in me what is required to be an overcomer. And so I ask, Lord, that that faith that you put inside of me would go to work today and overcome the world. Praise the Lord.